Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Hengdal Chitta. Good evening, Sangha. So we'll we'll start with a story. As usual, my my intrepid Zen dude Sid, who is sitting practicing perfection of wisdom and meditation and suddenly has a great vision. He sees himself in a Zen temple right at the base of Mount Sumero, bathed in the smoke of incense wafting up from the altar. Now our explorer decides he has to live out this vision. And so he sets out on his journey of a hundred thousand steps, keeping peace in his mind, occasionally eating only a handful of crunchy granola from the hemp bag on his belt. He journeys farther and farther until he arrives at Sumero. And there, just as he had envisioned it, there's a temple right at the base of the great mountain. And Sid climbs the steps and he pauses and he takes off his sandals and he walks inside the temple. And there's an old master in there waiting. He bows to our explorer and he turns and he bows to the altar and he lights the incense and invites Sid forward and Sid comes up and it's glorious. It's just like his dream, his vision from meditation. And he, he walks up and he stands there and he's bathing in the smoke of the incense wafting around him. And the master taps him on the shoulder. Sid turns and looks at him. The master says, why are you here? And the temple is gone and the mountain is gone and Sid is standing barefoot in a parking lot. And sometimes that's just the way it is. I, I was reading a book last week, I guess, uh, from another school. And I, 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 you know, everybody's got their way and our, our, Sangha accepts a great many of them, and rightly so. There are always questions, and you all know it. Sometimes you read the book and you say to yourself, is this really Zen? Is this really a teaching? And you always get into those arguments. You know, we're, we're discussing one such matter currently, I guess. What is the teaching? What is proper? And you, you always start from that base, that, that first thing that everybody always asks, you know, the, the newcomer that walks into the Zendo and it's, it's gone back in the koans and the stories and it's essentially, well, if we all have Buddha nature, why do we meditate? And or to further into the authors of some of our books and the leaders of some of the schools out there. Well, I've had Satori, why not? One of the things about our, our school is a concept of sudden enlightenment followed up devoutly and strictly by gradual cultivation. And that answers, at least for me, a lot of such questions. So if you think about it and you strip away the dualism and the arguments and the, is it this or that, or why isn't enlightenment always enlightenment? And why isn't Buddha nature always Buddha nature? Why do we have to practice if we have it? So I think about it kind of like a seed. Pick a seed, pick, you know, pick an acorn. The Greeks have a term called telos, which is what something is meant to be. 
And one could argue that the telos of that acorn is to become a mighty oak tree, or that the telos of that acorn is to be squirrel food, or maybe to be buried by a squirrel and forgotten about and not to be anything further other than going back to the earth. But that, that seed, that acorn, that's there. That's what's there. That's what all of us have. Doesn't necessarily mean, again, going into this dualism. Well, is it enlightenment? Is it Buddha nature? Is it, well, it's a seed. And for all of us, there's a different manner in which that seed becomes planted. Because ultimately the journey, as we teach, is very individual. The teaching is very individual. When a teacher works with students, the teaching is tailored for specifically that reason. For one person, that seed is planted because as a child, their family, their parent takes them to a temple. For another person, they read a book. You know, pick up Alan Watts, freshman year of college, and hey, I need to look into this. Or maybe there's a Zendo down the corner, or maybe we saw an interview with Dalai Lama or Nat Han. There's, there's these hundreds of thousands of ways that that seed can become planted. But even at that, does that mean it's attained? No. Maybe it's not planted properly. Maybe it's not watered well. Maybe the soil was incorrect or it's too deep or too shallow and the birds take it. So we've gone another step. We have this seed and we've planted the seed. Maybe it's right or not. And you know the folks that, that come along and practice with great vigor for a while and then wander off and maybe the seed wasn't really well planted we can't answer that for them they have to answer it for themselves maybe the teacher failed to instruct them on how to plant it but again there, there are these endless streams that go out from each of these actions each of these potentialities that we all share as sentient beings but let's say we have the seed and the seed is, is a good seed full of this Buddha nature and it's properly planted through the teachings in a, in a good soil and a good depth and watered properly and it sprouts and it rises up out of the ground and there it is, Kensho, awareness, awakening, the green shoot rises from the earth. Is that where it stops? No still doesn't stop. Maybe the shoot gets nibbled on by a deer or a rabbit. Maybe weeds grow around it and choke it. The sun scorches it. So what do we do? We've, we've achieved Kinsho. We've, we've had a moment. We've had a realization. We have burst out of the ground. We continue to cultivate it. You continue to work with it. You continue to tend to it, to, to pull the weeds, to remove the delusions, to water this new plant, this new life with wisdom and practice and meditation, to continue to, to nourish it. Coming forth out of the ground is not the end. That's the beginning. That's, that's the sudden enlightenment, let's say followed by the gradual cultivation, which is the continuing journey. The journey that doesn't stop when we walk into the Zendo and bow to the altar and light a stick of incense. The journey that doesn't stop the first time we sit in meditation and go, hey, wow, man, that was really deep. I think I got it figured out. The journey that takes us where we're going and follows us where we are and we walk along it or not. And at any point, we have to ask ourselves, just like we do with the other things, who are you? What are you doing? 
You walk into the temple, you light the incense, you bow. Why are you here? <laughs>